Awesome. So hello, everybody. My name is James Gress. Hope everyone's doing well. Seems like we're about six months into this uh, working from home situation for most of us. I uh, hope it's going well for everyone. I uh, wanted to welcome you to the Tampa Bay DevOps Meetup. I'm the lead for the North America DevOps Solution Factory for Accenture out of the Tampa uh, Advanced Technology Center. Uh, we put this uh, meetup together to share all things DevOps. We're always looking for uh, speakers. So if you're interested, just drop me a note. Um, just to be aware, this event will be recorded and posted on YouTube. Uh, some quick guidance uh, for the call is to everyone please keep themselves on mute unless uh, you're asking a question and the presenter is encouraging if you have any questions just to go ahead and go off of mute ask the question um, but if you're not actually act act uh, asking the question uh, we do ask that you kind of keep it on mute just so that um, we just don't get extra noise on the recording um, we encourage video um, as it feels more socially engaging uh, and at any time you can ask a question or put something in the chat um, and we will have a, a period at the end. The presentation is going to run for about 45 minutes and at the very end uh, we'll set aside about 15 minutes just for any open questions that anybody might have. I uh, just want to welcome you, um, Roberto. Thanks uh, for presenting. He's part of our Accenture team here in Tampa and he's going to be talking about TDD with Molecule, Docker, and Ansible. Roberto, you're up. Thank you, James. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, so you guys can see it? I can see it. <clears throat> Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, thank you, James, for the opportunity on this event. Um, today, we're going to talk about test driver development with Molecule using Docker as the infrastructure behind and just infra for testing Ansible development when we are talking about some development, we are talking about playbooks and roles. Um, I have been working with Accenture for almost it's going to be three years. Uh, I graduated in Cuba 2019 with a bachelor's degree in computer science. And it was in 2012, I started all this journey with the DevOps and crazy things, trying to put things together, solving issues, making um, the teams, trying to get everything ready for the teams, get agile things in the environment. Uh, I'm a pro Docker, Ansible. A long time I people was using Chef. Um, I'm a pro Jenkins, Ray, Ruby, everything related with Kubernetes. I really love it. Um, I have experience with models of the cloud providers at AWS, Azure. Um, I'm lingu language programming like Python, PowerShell, um, C Sharp, C++, Java, that kind of things. And for monitoring, ELK is one of my favorites. And I do love doing testing most of the time to bring quality to my products or artifact that I develop. I've been working also before starting in the US, I was working through a couple of companies in Latin America. That's a pretty insight, small insight about me. And um, one of the biggest challenge when we are developing with Ansible is that we require a fast creator of the clean infrastructure. What I'm talking about that one is every time that at the box need to start developing a, a playbook or a role, right? We need to do a couple of configuration before starting. Then we need to orchestrate those configuration in the environment that we want to try. And also we need to troubleshoot whatever is happening there. Uh, let's say, we want to use the virtual machine, then we have to download VirtualBox or VMware or any other virtualization uh, tool. Uh, if we want to use a cloud provider, we need to go there, create the cloud environment, um, go inside and start a couple of tools. So those ones are, are taking a lot of time, right? And that's one of the biggest, uh, the biggest benefits, right? Or, or the biggest challenge, sorry, for when you are developing Ansible or any other kind of development. The other one is uh, with Ansible, when you are deploying or where you're developing a play, but you want to deploy in multiple environments at the same time. For example, you want to install an Nginx, and then when you go out there in the market, you see, for example, Nginx is installed in different operating systems of flavor, like uh, Fedora, CentOS, uh, Ubuntu. Even if you are using Ubuntu, you want to specify, okay, I want to try in Ubuntu 18, 20, or I want to try in CentOS 7a. The kind of challenges are 
are, um, are in the daily development with the Ansible playbook. So whatever you were doing for that specific environment before, you have to do it multiple times right now for multiple environments. What is this? this it's a huge uh, task before developing or deploying to those environments. Um, the other thing is when you deploy or when you create your playbook, when you deploy your playbook, your components, uh, if you are running files, you have security in the file, you have verified connectivity, you have to do all that in multiple environments. So you have to go connect in those environment, verify what is the group, uh, is the service running, is the service enabled, is the port open. So this is really painful if you have to do it manually because Ansible help you to deploy that one and it's 100% reliable, but you have to verify those components are already there. And the last but not least uh, is when you are deploying, you want to do, okay, I've finished with my deployment. I would, I would, like, to, I would like to start over. So you need a new environment again because you don't want to keep developing on, on top of whatever was already deploying there. So you have to do again, a create, a deploy, a test and destroy by the end. Most of the people don't do the destroy, they reuse the same component, which is pretty dangerous, right? Because whatever was deployed there can be impacting your new development. So most of the time you can use tools like Bagram if you want to create a fast infrastructure, um, and that kind of strategy that is in the market. But today we will be talking about how Molecule with Docker help you to do that. So this talk is gonna be about Molecule with Docker and Test Infra. Docker is gonna be your infrastructure and Test Infra is gonna be the framework to test your playbooks. Uh, we, I'm gonna give you a little in, uh, summary of what those tools are, uh, how to install and set up. I will provide the documentation. Uh, it's pretty simple, more of them are Python package and um, what is the molecular structure in details? What is, uh, what is the molecular inside uh, Ansible playbook? Where do you put your tests? Where do you define what steps do you need to run first? Uh, how do you do validations? That kind of thing. So um, molecular, how do molecular help you to create a client environment? How to provide multiple environment the same thing? And how do you verify your components? And how do you do this process repeatable? Like you create this, de deploy, test, and destroy. And finally, we would do the takes away from this uh, talk. Um, what is Ansible for those that never used Ansible before? Ansible is a product of Red Hat and it's an IT tool that can configure, deploy uh, components. So it's an orchestration tool that you can deploy and do continuous deployment. Uh, with certain times, it's pretty fancy, but that one is a quote from the documentation. You always have a little bit of downtime, but it's really fast. Um, it's agentless, so you only require Python, and Python most of the time games with uh, installed already in all these uh, operating systems. When we are talking about Linux flavors, uh, Python is most of the time installed there. Um, you can connect with OpenSSH, or you can do fancy configurations to connect with Kerbero, LDAP, or any other centralized uh, credentials uh, system. And Ansible do my release three or four times per year. So you need to keep watching what was added, what was fixed, uh, what is the new feature in the Ansible. Uh, and you can see all the slides I have at the bottom. You have uh, the official documentation. So once we share that, you can go there and play a little bit with the documentation. What is Docker? Docker is the this is de facto the most easy tool for uh, continuous integration development that is agile for all the environments. Um, it's a container standard. It's, it's a, the, the idea with Docker is really is a really lightweight solution compared with virtual machines. And what you do, you just can run multiple hundreds of Docker's instance in your environment. It's going to be really easy to create. It's really easy to destroy and recreate environments and give you a lot of uh, features that you can run isolated environments in the same system. Um, also, I provide the documentation at the bottom. Uh, what is this infra? This infra is going to be is the, the framework where you can write Python tests in this case, is is the is the twins of uh, when we are talking about, for example, server spec, uh, chat test infra is the the twins uh, for Python solutions. 
Um, the documentation is pretty good. The documentation follows same convention names like uh, when you are trying to test package install service, open ports, sockets, uh, all those kind of features you can test as you, you do with other solutions like server spec. And what is Molecule? So Molecule was a solution that is a framework, right, for testing tool Ansible playbooks and role. So whatever you are developing a role or an Ansible, you should be using Molecule. So that bring quality to your code. And Molecule is any one of you remember or are using before test kitchen is what created thinking on top of that. So it's the same CLI with a lot of modification, a lot of features that were added and allows you to create its infrastructure locally. So Molecule have two main features test your infrastructure on top of an easy creation using Docker. You can use other pro other drivers, but in this conversation, we will be present, we will be using Docker. So what value is added with Molecule? Well, you have a standardization of testing. You will see with Molecule, you can standardize your, what is your test? Where do you need to locate your test? If you need to share the test, you can do that in between different scenarios. Um, the tests are following the test infra, um, uh, the test infra standard code, right? But you can specify multiples, you can specify one single file, it's up to you, it's up to the developer. In this case, it's up to the DevOps that is developing that playbook. Uh, it's fast loop for the development environments, like I said before, you can create and destroy, create create, test, destroy, create, test, destroy, create, test, destroy multiple times for multiple environments. That's one of the biggest uh, benefits. And the other is the validation. With, uh, with Molecule, you can define different kinds of validation. For example, you want to do GEMO blend. You can add that one and then you specify, and you can see where your GEMO has from syntax or, and you can fix it. Um, you can fix this, the, the syntax for Ansible playbooks. You can fix this, the style usable, using Ansible Lean 2. Uh, if you are using test infra, for example, you can use Flake A. Uh, and all, all those tools you can be uh, configured in your molecular configuration. And then you will see how you can do in syntax style at the impotence. So when your playbook is run once, it won't do the same thing twice. This is a huge benefit. And putting all this together, you can easily integrate molecule or your molecular test for any CI CD tool, or let's say Azure DevOps, Jenkins, GitLab, CI CD, um, Bitbucket, all of those supports is you are able to run containers in that environment. You can run uh, molecular pre with Docker. So in all, on top of all these tools and frameworks and amazing things, uh, I just want to bring a quote like uh, by Martin Fowler that what is TDD? Because we are talking about TDD. You can use molecular like a, a normal process where you develop the future and then you test it. But I, I would like to do it in the other way. I prefer other, <clears throat> always do defining the testing first, running and see that fails and then adding the piece of code that make that my test pass. That for me is making me just developing whatever I need, is making me organize my idea, is making me be more clean, more organized and moving one step at a time. So what Martin Fowler said is that the trajectory of development is a technique for building software that guide you uh, by writing tests. And what does that mean? So the first thing that you have to do is three simple steps. Write the text for the next piece of functionality you want to add. So you write the test before adding that code. Uh, write only the functional code onto the test pass. You will see you will fail multiple times but when you pass, you don't have to go back again. You, you know that is uh, it's reliable. And then when you have done, is you realize that you have repeatable code, you have something that is not following the drive uh, approach, like it. don't repeat yourself. You can do refactoring and run the test again. That's the main idea with the TDD. So we'll see when we create an Ansible project, right? Uh, with Molecule, uh, we will see the Ansible with all the components like uh, default files, handlers, meta, and tasks, templates, tests if you want to do tests for Ansible and birds. And then inside the Ansible playbook, you was, the Ansible road, you, was, you will have this molecule, pretty simple with one default scenario. 
and the death folder. So we will be talking about all these components in the next slide. But this, this one is pretty basically what is the, 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 the structure of this project. So whatever is in yellow is everything related with Ansible and then the red uh, box is going to be is molecule. So in molecule, by default, when you create the first role, you will see one scenario, but you, you can define multiple set scenarios. This is a way that you can uh, contains everything that you need to test your role. For example, you need to test your role for Ubuntu for different uh, flavors in Ubuntu centers. You can do different scenario, or you can use the same scenario for this multiple environment, but different goals that you want to test. That's the main idea of the scenario. Um, what you define in molecule is the molecular structure. It will tell you what do you need to do for your lean team, what is what is going to be your verifier. Uh, you will see what kind of image are you going to deploy uh, to create your infrastructure in, in, in uh, for Ansible. And then the converge you can define for all the steps that you have, you can do converge is going to be okay, deploy my playbook in that infrastructure that you define in, in the molecule YAML uh, component. Um, the test suites contain by default two components. The configuration test is where it's something that is by default. I never touched that before. And then in the test default is where you define your uh, test for your default scenario. It's pretty simple. We will see more details about all this in the next deck, in the next slide. So inside the molecule, uh, this is what we have as a molecule pro when we define, when we create the first role, right? We have the dependency, uh, we have the different kind of driver, platforms, privilege, verifiers. So what kind of dependencies we do we have in molecule? You can use Galaxy. Galaxy is like a, the, the role repository for Ansible roles. So if you are developing multiple roles, you can Put that in the repository and then solve your dependency from there. Uh, you can use Gil Shell. Those are uh, different way that you can resolve your dependency. Most of the time, when you use Shell, it's locally. Um, you cannot achieve your goal with Galaxy or Gil, um, but you can read a lot, a lot about those uh, on the. My recommendation is try always to use the Galaxy so you share whatever you have done with the community and people don't have to rebuild the wheel. Uh, in this case, for example, I'm putting here the molecular 2.2 and molecular latest because those are huge changes in between. The one that we're using in this talk is going to be the latest one, but before that one, uh, they were providing uh, support for uh, different kind of driver. You can deploy an Azure components or digital uh, Linux, Linux container, OpenStack, Bagram. In this case, in this example, in this talk, we are going to use Docker. Um, the only one that they have right now for the latest one are this one, but they keep adding multiple, they keep adding all those uh, drivers now. In the links, in the link section, you define what kind of link you want to use. In this case, I will use YAML link and Ansible link. Those are different. YAML link is going to give me everything type of style in my uh, YAMLs. In Ansible link is everything related with the Ansible itself. Uh, for example, in the metadata in your role, you need to define, for example, your your name, your company, what version of the, uh, what license are you using, uh, what what platform is this uh, Ansible role supports um, you define. That will give you an error. You don't have that defined in your metadata in the Ansible playbook. So in the platform section, you can add in this example, uh, I realized that I missed the S in the CentOS, but it's CentOS A. Um, I'm using this guy, uh, uh, Gerlin guy, because he provide an example of how to use um, that Ansible is really used for development environments because that contains all the Python and the package that you require to run your molecule against that instance. And this configuration you can copy paste in your environments and it will be successful for any kind of development you're using. Don't worry about the privilege true because this is only development. So you are doing this locally. You don't provide that kind of privilege in production. And most of the time you don't provide that kind of permissions if you don't trust what you are installing in your container. But if you trust what you're installing in your container, um, you can do privilege true. 
I, my recommendation don't do it for a production environment, but this is run all locally. Um, and here you can specify image, commands, volumes, privilege, and capabilities also. I'm not using any specific capability, but you can define that one there. Um, the next one is gonna be the provisioner. The provisioner is gonna be Ansible. Uh, and then you specify there, uh, you can provide more configuration. Like if you want to specify bar here, so you want to specify a specific configurations or plugin for your Ansible, you can specify those. Uh, all that documentation is uh, in the official Ansible uh, website. I just keeping this one simple, simple for this demo. And then the last one is Ansible, very, sorry, is the molecular verifier. You can use two verifiers, Ansible and Tilt Infra. In the previous version, I believe they have other, other like inspect also, but today I will be using this Infra. So um, the testing cycles, right? When you are doing testing cycles, we have CI, CT, continuous integration, continuous testing. And when you do that, right, when you want to create your playbook and then you room um, molecule test that will give you all these steps. It would, it would try to solve dependency. It would try to see if you have any issues, styles or syntax with your link. It will clean up, it's the remaining uh, clean up and destroy are different, but it's, it's, they are running together. So you would destroy whatever instance was created before and giving you a clean environments. It would do syntax, create, prepare, and converge, add impotence, all of those in the cycle. As you can see, by the end, you would do verify and destroy everything again. So that's the process when you're running a CI CD platform, like uh, let's say when you're just running in Azure DevOps or, or Jenkins or GitLab, you run the whole test. You create the infrastructure, you test, you deploy, you test, and then you destroy at the end of the pipeline. When you are doing development environment, right? Development cycle, sorry. What you, what you do is just create, prepare and converge and then you do verify. So you do those, you don't wanna do tests because every time that you do tests, you will be creating and destroying the infrastructure. So you wanna keep it, but at the end of the cycle, you would do a test. I will show that in the demo. Um, well, you can see more of the time dependency is one of the first that is running because if your um, is your role have dependencies, it would try to get those first and then it would try to do the next step. All of these um, steps can be redefined in the molecular scenario. You can organize and you can source in different way what do you want to run first. But I do recommend, don't, don't do it, just keep it in that one. If you're not using, just leave it there. Um, it won't take too much. It's, it doesn't spend more than two seconds to evaluate what is in there. If you have something, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but if you have nothing, that's fine. Um, it's demo time. So I prefer to do and stop. And then if anyone have any questions, please feel free to ask me anything. I don't know, James, we have anything in the chat. I didn't pay attention. I just can see there's couple of messages there. Let me escape this one. I don't see anything in the chat yet, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, go ahead and bring them up and ask. <clears throat> okay, um, so this is demo time. Um, I have this directory here, it's pretty clean. Um, I'm, I'm going to create, I'm gonna do a molecule um, dash dash help to explain a little bit whatever we were all the topics that we're talking in the presentation. Um, and then when you do Molecule Hub, you will see all these uh, components, uh, sorry, all these features, right? Like uh, the one that we were talking before, check, clean up, converge. These ones are organized alphabetically, but whatever, uh, but the order that, that Molecular Run is different, is the one that we saw in the deck before. So let's try to do a demo like uh, creating from scratch, sorry. Creating from scratch a role. So we do molecule. Init is the command to create a role, right? And then we do help. If you don't know anything, sorry, molecule. I miss it, an extra I. 
So you will see that Molecule gives you all the steps and the feature that you need to add as you want to create a new role. So I'm going to create a new role that is named, um, I'm going to use a dependency in Scala C. I don't want to use this by default. I want to define it's going to be Docker by default. Uh, the link, we can leave it like that. We're going to use jam, jam link. And the provision here by default is Ansible, but we want to use, um, for example, sorry, and the verifier by default is Ansible, but we want to use this infra. So pretty simple, we do, we just type this in and then we can say, okay, the driver that I wanna use is gonna be Docker. Uh, let me move this to the left. The verifier, verifier, verifier name is this infra. And then the last option here, as you guys can see is a uh, uh, molecule, the arguments, and the last one is going to be the, the role name, right, like this. So it's going to be nginx role. And that will create a directory here. As you can see, that create everything for me. I don't have to do all these kind of things. I don't need to know what is the, the structure for the Ansible. It's created for me. And then it creates the molecule directory and then one default a scenario in that inside that molecule. So is we let's reset and see let's see if we do molecule test what happens. I have to move inside the row and just clean the screen and then molecule test again and then we'll see what happens and then molecular is executing the test cycle, is everything is going to do dependency, lean, clean up, nothing is there, nothing nothing needs to be destroyed. We don't have anything that's specified for syntax. And then create with the the uh, it will create the instant the container, converge with deploy whatever it has in the playbook by default. I then potence, we will try to not, we would do a notification what, what changes, what was in size effects I never used before. So I have a gap in there. <laughs> and the verify the one that is running the, the test and then clean up and destroy. So we can see one at a time, right? Um, all this is being executed. So creating molecular instance is doing here, it's a, there's a change is doing the, the converge and is doing the idempotence. So it's keeping Cypher, everything that is in yellow, sometimes it means change. So when you see skipping is because we don't have anything like that in there. It's running the test, the test executed was passed and then it's destroying the instance. So if we go back and then do a little inspection here, right? There you go. It was running successfully, but let's do it is we are developing a new playbook, right? A new role. So what we have here, like we said before, let me put in here. This is a pretty basic configuration that ANSI will give you by default, right? So let's say that we want to, let's say this Nginx role, right? We want to deploy, we want to install Nginx for CentOS. So what we have to do, what I like to do is most of the time is I just came here, right? And then I specify what are my requirements first. That's the idea behind TDD, BDD. So I'm gonna delete all this, right? And then I have a couple of tests over here in this, um, in this section that I wanna type again. Let me copy that over there. And let's say that I want to check, right? Um, let's do this. So what I want to do right now is uh, verify the package is installed, Nginx is installed in that CentOS image. What I can do is do molecule, uh, Molecule Verify. Molecule Verify is gonna run the test and then it say, okay, I have a failure because you don't have anything in your file. 
um, that one is failing right there. So a required package is telling you it's pretty nasty, but it's giving you where that fails and you say a required package hash package is not there. So what we can do for that one is if we want to pass the test right, that section fail, we want to go back to your Ansible, let's say in the first tax, and then we want to install, uh, we want to do the installation name. I believe I have it here, but it's kind of easy to copy paste over. So we are installing that one. Let me copy that. And there you go. I don't want to mess with that. So it's the June package. And these ones are to need to go. That's that's the way that you install that one. So the molecule, let me clean the screen, reset. And then we can do molecule converge because we are developing. We don't want to do tests because tests every time is going to create the infrastructure, converge and destroy. It's taking more time. So once it finished, it would try to do, um, the image is already created. So as you can see, it's, it's running fast now. And then it would do the, the converge right there. So it's installing Jenkins. Sorry, installing Jenkins, oh my God. Installing Nginx. I believe when you are doing that in CentOS, right? It require another package that you believe is a per release. But I just wanna show you that fail. So you realize what is required there. It's taking a little bit. Actually, Roberto, while, while that's going on, there was a question in the chat. Okay. Can a provider and a verify be the same, or doesn't it, or doesn't it matter? A provider. And, and then the dash in it. What does the syntax do? So what was what was the first question? The first question: Can a provider and a verify be the same, or doesn't matter? Uh, it cannot be the same. For example, you can use Ansible. The only, the only verified can be the same as the provider is Ansible because with Ansible, you can do the test. For example, when you install a package or, or let's say you install something like Nginx, right? And by the end of your, you provide the index HTML, or you provide the application, uh, and then you've changed the, the virtual bar, ports just 8080. With Ansible, you can room or you can verify that. You can say, okay, I want to see if that port is open. So what your Ansible is doing is installing the package and starting the service, but you verify it. With Ansible too, you can you can write that like uh, asking for that port is open or the socket is open. That's why it's the only way that you can use um, the same verifier can be as a provi provisioner. So <clears throat> if we, I hope that answered the question. What was the second one? Uh, it said uh, the dash in it. What does the syntax do? The dash in it? The dash in it, I-N-I-T. Oh, um, the molecular I need role. That was, I believe that the question, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, the, the one when you do molecular I need is a uh, is molecular help. Let me type you that because I have. So when you do molecular help, right? And then you will see the in it here is, is initialize a new role or a scenario. So you can create a role and then if you have a role already, you can create a new scenario. For example, by default, you have a default scenario, but if you want to add a new one in a specific role, you just need to provide the scenario name. So any question about the, the so any any command that you execute in the with molecule, you can find the documentation here. 
and then you can go deeply and deeply and deeply like uh, like we, we, we saw before you can do a molecule in it and then you just type the hub and then that give you the next inside okay it can be a role or a scenario if you use a role or a scenario and then you type help a game that will give you more insight about what is the next step and if we can see here for example if we do docker docker ps right we can see that the the container is running and if we do verify a game uh molecule molecule verify right we converge already so our package was installed by ansible and then when we do verify and then we ask okay is that package installed okay the pass the test pass uh, which is really good is we i forgot to add something here that we can for example people some of the people have been asking me like hey i saw the whole test is running but i don't see the test name uh, most of the time people like to see what was my test name so there's some options here that you can add sorry options uh, and then i believe this verbose true if you run again um, the molecular verify, it will give you, I believe, the test names uh, that was executed. So as you can see, the one that was executed was test package uninstall, and then that's the that's the test that you define here in your installation. So if we want to do something, um, let's say that we we have more requirements, right? we have something like uh, to do again the exercise we want to do okay well, i installed the package but i would like to see right let's say i would like to see that the the service is running and is enabled is enabled and running right so you can do that with this infra too does infra allow you to get what is the service name and then you provide the service name and then you run it. And the process is again, I just add in the piece of code, molecule, verify, and just add in the piece of code that I wanna see uh, in my playbook. I, even if I know that it's gonna fail, it's giving me the steps of what do I need to do to get that completed. So, so you can see here it fails in this one which is more readable right now um, and said okay i fail in there why i fail in there um, the service enable is not enable okay that's a failure let me go back to my playbook and we just add the next piece of code that make my test pass so you can do pretty simple like uh, sorry, let me copy paste. Uh, let me move this to the left. So enable on runnings. It's a service in is a service in Ansible. I don't want to type all this. The names of the services that Nginx is enable and it's a started. We do let me do a clean molecule molecule converge. So, so a Ansible deploy my playbook um, against that new container and let me see when it's done I will try and verify again and see my test pass this is the idea behind TDD how do you fail before adding the piece of code that you need um, so in the converge part right we have something like this uh, could not find the request service engine X let me see here Never run service engine X. Stay is present. Just started. Could not find the requested service engine X. Install enable and run. Okay, why is that failing? Let me review here. Nginx started, is enable, is started. And the last command was converge. And could not find request service Nginx. 
I'm typing something wrong. No, enable, enable present. Let me see why that failing there. It's because I did the converge, but it's not giving me, maybe I copy from service names started. Yeah, it's fine. Let me do converge test and see if that destroy and redeploy. That should not be the case. It should be every time that you do the converge is using the same one. But I don't know why it's not seeing the started. This is the right syntax right here. And enable it is the same, it's yes too, so. Okay, I, I remember why. So in this image by default, right? In this image by default, when you do this, um, that's one of the, one of the molecular part that you, I'm using for example, GLI um, configuration is because service by default, system D is not enabled um, in, the, in the containers, in the image, in Docker. So what you can do is use this, um, this guy have a lot of popularity and he's doing a lot of um, support in all anything related with Ansible, Molecule, that kind of thing. So what you can do is use this one right here and then we replace it with this one because that one is not enabled. Um, right there. So what I'm using is this image for this guy that it has everything that you need. Uh, if you want to do the number A, you can use it A. Um, we need all this configuration in order to provide a connectivity between Docker and the C groups and the privilege equal to. Um, that one will be, this one will be failed again because we did the test, but we didn't change this one. So I will do the molecule converge and then convert and verify. And then we will see that one is going to work. So we do molecule converge. Sorry, converge. What I'm saying is deploying in the new, this new infrastructure, my playbook, and let me know if you find the service. That was the case that, that was the reason why it wasn't able to find the concept of service in the container. If we, if we check in the meantime, right? In the meantime, when this is running in the background, right? We have a converge here that is saying, it's pretty simple. It's just converge, it's just include, you can remove everything here. You don't need this, um, you can do your roles like you normally do. And then keep it simple. It's gonna be the same. And then if you want to add bars, configurations, et cetera, environment variables, you can do the same here. It's fully com configurable. Um, <clears throat> let's see, is that complete? And that's, that's the whole process. That's the whole idea. Like if you are developing your playbook, just do um, write the test before you are testing anything. You're, you are adding a piece of code and then just add that piece of code and then run the test again and see if something is missing, you add the next piece of code until your test is green. Um, that's the main idea with the TDD behavior and using Molecule uh, with Ansible. For example, there is a good, uh, there is another, I, another example that I have in here, right? That once you install your, your Nginx package and then you start the service, we can add another piece of code that is, hey, I wanna see that service is, in, is a, uh, available in port 80. That would be another example of how to do this cycle. Hey, hey Roberto, where do you um, create the rules and apply it to the current session or login? 
so the, the you the, this is a role and then a uh, um, molecule is reading for this one the converge is the one that is saying hey apply my role this is my role to the molecule infrastructure that you define here this is the way that you do it um, and then you can see uh, this is whatever you want to specify in the new role if you have a new role in this case we have only one single role right but if you have a directory with multiple role each role should have his own molecular configuration you don't want to use the same molecule for multiple roles because this is part of the molecule of the ansible role life cycle so if you have adding new thing here is because you are uh, you are changing your test for that specific role but like, like, like uh, for example, let's say that you have something like um, in this, when you run molecular, right? You have the prepare, let me see in the top of that one. Uh, let me see molecule, molecule converge again. And then you will see the identity. Let's see here, you have dependency create, prepare and converge. Create, what is that? It's just create the instance, the container. The prepare, is something that you need to do before running the converge. Um, one example of that is you can create a prepare for any of those commands. You can create your own custom uh, converge uh, or prepare or whatever command execution. For example, let's say that you have, uh, let's copy, rename that one, right? And let's name it prepare. Um, what we can do, we name it, uh, let's change the name, prepare, it doesn't matter. Um, but what we want to do is something like this, uh, task, right? And then we want to do something like name, uh, Uday, gosh, uh, Uday, gosh. And then what you do is zoom, because this is sentence, right? Uh, name is going to be everything. Uh, latest, uh, sorry, state is present um, today, gosh, equal yes. So this is something that you want to run just once when you prepare, but you don't want to run it every time that you do the converge. So when you do the converge again, right, um, it will you will see that the prepare uh, the prepare state is this uh, the instance is already created that's why it's a skip it but then you see the action now the current action that is running is prepare uh, what is that doing is okay for that instance I want to date my cache before installing any package um, to get the latest or your package out that your repositories or that kind of things so this is a way that you can do. Uh, you can keep adding more steps uh, based on what molecules provide as an interface. Um, that's pretty basic the cycle you do. Uh, you add your test, you verify that fails, you add the piece of code, and then you verify again. Everything is green. G refactor is you realize that something is uh, duplicated or you can do a better uh, design and then uh, the, uh, you can run the test environment again. That is pretty much so. If uh, the, the, the last example that I want to show is this one. For example, let's say in our test, right? Uh, I want to add this piece. And then what I want to see if my 480 is reachable. Uh, in there. So there's a lot of things you can verify if you go to test infra documentation is in, this, in, the, in the deck. You can see that you can check services, uh, users, group, files, file permissions, owner of the file. Uh, you can check if that is a link, is a directory, is a file, uh, is a specific, you can run commands and get the, the output command, do verification of that one too. Um, in this example, this example is already in, it's in GitHub. So I can share that with the whole team. Uh, it's in GitHub already. And we have, I added here how to do the GitLab CI CD. It has the action for, um, it has the, the example how you can run this one in GitHub with GitHub actions. 
um, how can you run in, in GitLab? If you are if you are using GitLab, if you are using Azure DevOps, I added the pipelines. If you are using Bitbucket pipelines, I also added the pipeline there. So you have one, three, four, five examples how you can run that one in a um, CI/CD um, platform. Uh, is the same. It's gonna run. It, it doesn't matter what is gonna be, what is your infrastructure or, or your CI/CD server. If you are allowed to run containers, that's fine. Molecular is gonna work. And as you can see, it's, it's keep working. So if we do the 35, um, 35, it will say, okay, you have the package installed, you have the service running, and that service is enabled and running, and then you have the port 80 available um, in that container. And then you have all your tests successfully passed. That's the main idea. Um, I, I can give you um, the URL for this project in GitHub, and then you can share the team with the team because I don't have that one in the in the deck. Um, that's pretty much what I have. Um, the takeaways on this presentation is uh, Molecule provides fast way to create a local infrastructure. Uh, to test your roles or playbook. Uh, you can do it for multiple environments. I just did it for one, but you can add Ubuntu, Fedora, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, standardize the test configurations. You have one place, you add that test in there. If you want to do more tests for a specific environment, you can create scenarios. Um, it gives you validation for syntax, styles, and impotence and correctness. And it's easy to integrate with any CI CD tool uh, where containers can run. Um, this is pretty much how much time do I have? Uh, we are at 526. Um, so we can take a, a few extra minutes, um, although okay. I would say we probably should. That I forgot about that one is on the molecule, right? Um, does anyone have a question? Just feel free to, it's a link. By default, it's not enabled, but we can do Jamo link, right? And then we can do Ansible link too. And then we, we do that, for example, let's say that I go to my uh, class, for example, right here. Uh, let's make this pretty dirty and then save it, right? I can do uh, molecule verify. And that will fail. Um, that should be failing. It did, this case didn't fail. So I don't know why, but it should be fail. And then we had another question in the chat. Is there any difference between the standards since we're moving towards collection? Is there a difference for molecule when, when using it against an Ansible role versus a role inside of an Ansible collection format? Okay, uh, let me see if they got it. Well, what you have is when you are comparing versus playbooks based role, right? In the playbooks, if you have playbooks only, right? What you have to do is in the, maybe that is the question. I don't know if I get it, but if you have a playbook, you define in your converge what playbook you want to apply to your infrastructure. In this case, I've been using roles, but you can specify tasks here. When you have a, a collection of tasks, right? In a single file, that's a playbook. When you have this infrastructure of folders, this is called a role because this, this follow a convention. Um, but whatever you want to apply in your infrastructure, you just need to define the converge. That's the action that deploys your Ansible playbook to your uh, Docker image. So let me see if I'm doing molecule length. I, I hope that answered the question. Okay, there you go. Uh, so I don't know why in the verify didn't work, but it's giving me this error right here. It's saying, okay, in the task main, you have too many space after the hyphen, and then you have the block and mapping star. So you can go there and see uh, those errors and fix it. Okay, here we are. You just need to read where is that error in the task demo um, is line five. On the line five is finding this extra space here in the jump 
it should now be starting. And then it's withdrawn again. It would say the other one is failing. Uh, two, li two lines, too many lines, more than two. Okay, and then this one, the, the first one was Jamoli, and this one are related with my Ansible playbook, right? So what is that saying is that the role should contain platform, author, and company license. And then you have uh, a meta, a trailing web space. So what we can do is you go to your meta, right? And then this is something that you have to be aware of. Okay, this is my um, Roberto. Um, we need to install Nginx, sorry, Nginx. And then the company is optional, uh, made up. And then it's saying, what kind of licensing are you gonna use? Let's use mid, uh, the mid license. And also it's complaining about the license company, author and platform. So I don't have a platform defined here, which is a good practice to say, okay, it's gonna be CentOS and the version is gonna be seven because that's the one that we're using and nothing else. And line 53, maybe you have an extra space there. If we run it again, then we are seeing that we don't have so many error right now. So the link is working. The, the YAML link is the only one that is raising an error. Uh, let's go to our task and the line 15 is this one right here. So just hit it again. And then you have uh, a clean playbook with your YAML link and your Ansible link 100% successful. If you want to define any link uh, rules, you can do it down here. You specify all this, you can keep adding more, you enable. Uh, some of them are disabled by default, but you can enable those. Uh, that give you also more quality to you, the quality to your playbook, right? Um, that's pretty much that I have. So remember, if you want to deploy, if you are using that one in any uh, those environment, you can see that one in the in this project. If you are using um, Ansible, Debug, I have a couple of example here actually. And Roberto, you can you put that a uh, link in the chat for everyone? And I'll yeah, send it out sure. as a, um, I will do it. I'll, I'll send it out as a supplemental as well afterwards. But in case people want to jump into it um, right away. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording um, and then we'll just hang out uh, for anybody that wants to ask any questions offline. Um, that'd be great. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for everybody attending. Again, if you have any topics you'd like to hear about or present on, uh, just reach out and happy to uh, see how we can do that. <laughs>